My name is Kay Byfield, and this is your Art Speak Studio Moment. Today we're going to talk about the difference between tonal value and intensity in color, because those two concepts are so important to creating effective paintings. In order to do that, we have to start with the good old color wheel. The color wheel as we know it was first envisioned by Sir Isaac Newton, the physicist, back in the 17th century. He was investigating the way that color could be broken down into the spectrum, and he developed the first color wheel. The color wheel as we know it today was developed later by Johann von Goethe, the poet and, and philosopher who talked a lot about color theory and even published a book on it. Goethe was the first to recognize that there's a psychological component to color, which everyone recognizes today, and that colors were antagonistic and harmonious with each other, and that artists could use those to effectively contribute to their artworks. There are four qualities of color that are necessary for artists to understand. They are complementary relationships, color temperature, intensity, and tonal value. Looking at this simple color wheel, we see that we have the three primary colors, the elemental colors for all artworks, equidistant from one another on the color wheel. So the elemental colors, the elementary colors, the primary colors are red, yellow, and blue. And each of those primary colors can be mixed with another primary color to make what we call a secondary color. So red and blue make violet, blue and yellow make green, and yellow and red make orange. Please notice that the secondary color that is made up of the two primaries is directly across from the other primary color that isn't part of that mixture. And that color, that secondary color, is the complement, the opposite of the other primary. So the complement of blue is orange, the complement of red is green, which is made up of blue and yellow, and the complement of yellow is purple. What this means is that each of these are complements. And if you mix them together, you will get a neutral. Because if you mix all three primary colors, you get a neutral. So red, yellow, and blue in any permutation, we get a neutral. It will be a brown or a, or a gray. On this color wheel, what we notice is we have what we call warm colors all these colors on this half of the color wheel, the red, orange, and yellow, those are considered warm colors because those colors are related to things that in nature are warm. And the colors on this side of the color wheel are cool colors because those relate to cool things like the water and sky and so forth. But to make it even more complicated, we have a warm and a cool version of each of our colors. So even though red is a warm color, we have a cooler version of red, a purplier red, and we have a warmer version of red, an orangier red. So in my, um, in my palette, the cooler red would be the alizarin crimson, a purpley red, and the warmer red would be the cadmium red, which is a warmer, orangier red. And yellow, uh, a yellow that is still yellow, but it's to the orangey side, would be a warm red. And a yellow like Oriolan would be a cooler yellow, a greener yellow. And we can do this with all the colors on the color wheel, which is what this color wheel shows. So this is a different color wheel, a little bit more complicated color wheel. And in this color wheel, we can see that the, uh, those primary colors and secondary colors and the tertiary colors 
the third the colors in between a primary and the, the adjacent secondary we can see those bright versions of the primary secondary and tertiary colors and we can see a light version of each of those primary secondary and tertiary colors but we can also see what happens if you take that primary color and you mix it with a little bit of its complement? So a little bit of violet in the yellow dirties the yellow. It creates a less intense yellow. And on the other side, a little bit of yellow in with that violet creates a violet that is also less intense, muddy. And you can do that with each of the primary, secondary, and tertiary colors. So we get dulled versions if we mix a little bit of the complement with the, with the color, the pure hue. And we get a lighter color if we mix a little bit of water or using a different medium, perhaps oils or acrylics, if we mix white paint with it, we also get a lighter version of the pure hue. So this color, color wheel is a little bit more sophisticated. And of course, when we mix them all together, we get a pure neutral. We haven't talked much of, yet about value. And value, tonal value, is the most reliable way that artists make things work. Because everyone sees dark and light unless they have a vision impairment. So here we see the basic colors that I recommend to students in a five-step value scale. And you can see each one of these colors um, goes from very light to a light mid-tone to a mid-tone to a dark mid-tone to the darkest version of that color as it comes out of the tube. And so we have a value scale for all of our colors. And anybody who can see well would be able to see these value steps. However, all colors can be bright or dull. And so here I have done a little diagram to kind of give you some idea of how that works. On this side, we have value and our boxer has stripes across him and they're of the same color, but it's light stripes and darker stripes of the blue. On this side, we have orange, but the stripes are bright orange and dull orange of approximately the same value. And this is our intensity. So bright and dull colors are, in, are the way we describe intensity, and light and dark colors are the way we describe value. These two terms are often mixed up. I often hear people referring to something as being too light and they say instead that it's too bright or that something is dull and they say it is too dark. And what they mean is it's not intense, it's muddy looking, it's not bright. So it's important to understand the difference between those two terms. We use the dulled, less intense colors to create a mood, to give information, to make an adjacent bright color look brighter and more intense. But colors can come in light dull as well as dark dull, and they can come in light bright as well as dark bright. And so it's very important for artists to understand the difference. All colors can be light or dark, bright or dull at the same time. So it is important for artists to know how to use color successfully in order to create great paintings. I hope this has been helpful to you and I wish you happy painting. Bye.